A warm welcome to your Bobby the City Evening News Update for Tuesday, May 3. Fresh changes to this year's Crop Over Festival were announced today. Chief Executive Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Carol Roberts Reefer, announced new rules for two major events, Grand Kadumant and the Four Day Morning Jam. In the case of Grand Kadumant, there is now one route instead of the six proposed in March, and for Four Day Morning, there are two options. The route for Grand Kadumant, a single route, has been approved. Uh, it will start uh, from the ABC Highway at Warren's to the Emancipation Statue. It will make a loop, the Emancipation Statue, come back along the highway, go through Waterford Boulevard, and culminate at the National Stadium. For four-day morning, two routes have been approved. The first, from the King George V Memorial Park to Lucas Street and into Bushy Park, St. Philip. And we're entering Bushy Park via the North Gate and also Searles in Christchurch to the Lowlands Roundabout and then back to Searles. I'd want to say for both Four Day Morning and Grand Kadumat, it's the intention of the NCF and the stakeholder groups to canvas the um, neighborhoods and communities in these locations to ensure that uh, we don't seem to be invading without any um, interaction and conversation with the residents in the area such that the, their day-to-day -day living and the staging of this event for one day only can coexist um, peacefully. The NCF CEO also revealed new protocols for events. All public events will be staged in pre-approved open-air venues and uh, specifically identified well-ventilated indoor spaces. All patrons, staff, and service providers, with the exception of catering and hospitality staff, must be fully vaccinated or present a negative rapid antigen test prior to the event, and this test will be valid for a period of, 20, of 48 hours. The maximum capacity at approved venues will be based solely on the size of the venue, and the application of the social distancing protocol. Let me explain that. Venue A has uh, an available capacity of X amount of uh, square feet. When you apply the three foot rule to that um, venue capacity size, you end up with 350 patrons. That is your capacity tier. It is not as is widely um, promoted that patrons at events must stand three feet apart. All catering and hospitality staff must be fully vaccinated and present a negative rapid antigen test, which is valid for 48 hours. Indoor events such as Calypso tents and exhibition openings uh, will still be subject to mandatory wearing of masks as well as appropriately spaced seating where applicable. President of the Barbados Masqueraders Association, Anthony Lane, favors the changes and he praised the NCF for consulting with stakeholders. He says 14 bands have confirmed for Grand Canumant and they will put on the best show ever. We will still produce the best possible costumes for 2022 because this is our stepping stone for 2023. Uh, whatever revelers we lose in 2022, we will be looking to regain them in 2023. So Barbados crop over is on, and we will make sure it is the best crop over ever, as we look to do every year. Head of the Entertainers Association of Barbados, Rudy Maloney, is also pleased with the turn of events, and he declared crop over is on. Barbados is going to lend to having the most fantastic experience you have seen for a long time. And I, I can guarantee you that from the professionals and the persons that are here today, um, the events, um, the jump, all of that will lend to the experience. Um, being creative, um, we are navigating through uh, serious times, and we know for sure that we will give the world the experience that they're, that we're, that they're looking for. Massey officials are continuing cleanup and damage assessment at its Worthing store 
following an early morning blaze. Immediate action by officers at the nearby Worthing Fire Station and their colleagues from the Bridgetown Fire Station quickly brought the fire under control. The fire started in a freezer. Randall Banfield, the general manager of Massey Stores, was grateful no one was hurt and he said staff would be redeployed until the store resumes operations. And we have about 150 staff that would, that would work here, so I suppose you would say that all the staff would be in some way uh, affected. But some are, as I said, some are being deployed as we speak to some of the other stores uh, to cope with the, with the traffic that those stores may now, may now pick up. Some will be, will be retained here to help us, you know, put things together, help with the clean up, help with the assessments. Um, so we're hopeful that we will be back up and running soon. Political scientists share mixed views on the election of new DLP president Dr. Ron Yearwood. Devron Bruce tells Barbados today the UWI law lecturer may be just what the party needs for a fresh start. I think the, the victor in Dr. Yearwood, I think, is the preferred victor if we're going to be speaking about rebranding the building and really bringing a new energy to the Democratic Liberal Party. Uh, so that development, I think, can only be a positive considering the alternative was someone who had been rejected on multiple occasions at this point at the now national and the party level. So it's a positive development and I think that Dr. Yearwood has what is necessary to bring the energy, bring the, the renewed vision to the Democratic Party going forward. But veteran political scientist Dr. George Bell is not convinced that Yearwood's election will lead to any major change for the party. He suggests the DLP is still facing a leadership crisis. This is the immediate demonstration of support for a leader in the re-election. And it is compounded by the fact that Dr. Yearwood comes from outside of the party. And without any exposing or without to the inner culture of the party, he aims for leadership, which I think is a very shallow political maneuver. I do not think that he has the institutional yeah, instead of knowledge or memory to really pull out from the Democratic Labour Party. One is clear in it both. And therefore it is difficult for him to identify problems, genuine problems relating to party that would help him to drive himself out of the present political hole that is in. In today's COVID-19 update, deaths from the viral illness reached 400 today following the death of a 77-year-old man. Meanwhile, the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 334 new cases, 126 males and 208 females, from the 928 tests conducted on Monday. Of the positive cases, 68 persons were under the age of 18 and 266 were 18 years and older. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is hard. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news in Jamaica, two unions are appealing to employers to respect workers' right to sick days as part of the work from home plan. Sandy Williams of Television Jamaica reports. There are no concerns that work from home has made it harder to take sick days. It's something the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions and the Jamaica Civil Service Association have taken note of. 
there seems to be a notion among some employers that you are at home, so it means that, you know, it's fair game, open season, and therefore things like, the um, you know, leave of absence do not apply. And that is the furthest thing from the truth, because all work from home does is change the physical location of the workplace. If the supervisor calls the person when they are not well, they are actually violating the individual's entitlement for sick leave. And it's something that the employee must remind your supervisor that, remember, soup, I'm off, this is, I'm actually sick. Notwithstanding that I'm home, I am actually sick and I am not able to function. President of the JCSA, O'Neill Grant, says employees have a right to report supervisors and managers who refuse to grant them sick days while working remotely. On the international scene, a leaked draft opinion by the United States Supreme Court showed justices have voted to strike down the landmark 1973 Road v. Wade ruling, which laid the foundation for modern federal protection for the right to access abortions in the United States. It's one of the most divisive issues in the United States. Within hours of a leaked draft opinion showing justices could overturn a landmark ruling on abortion rights, protesters from both sides gathered outside the Supreme Court. It's been considering whether to overturn the 1973 judgment known as Roe v. Wade that legalized abortions across the country. I'm very passionate about being pro-life and I'm just here as an observer to see uh, what the attitude is like and kind of witness history because this is a huge deal. It's expected to issue its ruling in June, but the draft written by Conservative Justice Samuel Alito suggests the top court would find the Roe v. Wade decision was wrongly decided because the U.S. Constitution makes no specific mention of abortion rights. This is really just tearing apart everything that we've worked for and everything, all the change that we've worked for to happen. It would represent a seismic shift in U.S. politics, pushing decisions on abortion rights back to individual states. Keep your groceries off our ovaries. It could also have a major impact on upcoming midterm elections, as well as the presidential vote in 2024. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.